It's time now for Movie Spotlight, our Friday feature where we review some of the latest cinematic releases in Korea and online. And we, of course, do that with the help of our esteemed film critics who are here with us in the studio. First, we have Jason Bechevace. Jason, hello. It's good to see you. Hey, happy new year, Jay. Happy new year to you too as well, Jason. And we have Darcy Paquette with us as well. Hello, Darcy, and happy new year as well. Yeah. Hi, Jenna. Yes, welcome back, gentlemen, to our first movie spotlight of the year. And with the start of the new year, we've decided to shake things up and do things a bit differently this year. Instead of simply reviewing two recent releases, we want to ask our critics, Jason and Darcy, what their viewing recommendation is this week, giving our listeners in Korea some ideas about what to watch this weekend. And if there is a major release, such as the latest superhero blockbuster that we simply have to review, we will ask if they recommend the movie or not, and then go from there as well. So, gentlemen, we're handing a little bit more responsibility to you both, <laughs> although I'm Great. sure you'll be able to handle it. So with this new format, let's get cracking. Darcy, let's kick things off with you. What is your recommendation for us to watch this week? So this is a re recommendation, particularly for parents with small children. If you are looking for some time off and you want something to keep your kids engaged and busy, uh, certainly any fan of Frozen may have been aware that this movie is coming up. And so the movie is Wish. Uh, it's from Disney Animation. Um, I mean, Disney has done very well in Korea, both kind of the, you know, the traditional animation department and then Pixar as well. Uh, I mean, last year, Elemental was a really interesting case because it opened and uh, it didn't open huge, but it just stayed and stayed and stayed in theaters and kind of slowly, you know, s built up over 7 million tickets admissions. Um, yeah, in, in the case of Wish, this is a film that opened in North America um, at the end of 2023. Right, in November, I believe. Yes, and... I mean, it didn't hit expectations there. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of perhaps reasons behind that. Uh, a lot of people have talked about the fact that, you know, Pixar or Disney during the pandemic started releasing their films directly to streaming, their mm. streaming service. And, you know, kind of got families out of the habit of going to the theaters to catch the latest Disney release. And... Yeah, so that may be part of it. You know, the reviews have been so-so, and you know, we'll talk more in detail about the film. Uh, but, you know, on the surface, it does have this pedigree in that uh, Jennifer Lee, the screenwriter and director of Frozen, uh, wrote the script. Um, and then there's Chris Buck, who was one of the co-directors of Frozen, and um, he co-directed this film together with a Thai animator, uh, Fawn Vera Sunthon. And... Yeah, so a lot of people are looking to see, you know, how much of the, the frozen magic can this movie right. capture? I mean, it's clearly aimed at the same audience and um, young girls in particular, I think. Um, but, you know, they, of course, they throw in jokes to try to, ex you know, expand the... Um, the appeal to, yes, I guess, to, adults to and the parents uh, taking their children to see the film. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, and so the story, it focuses on this 17-year-old girl, soon to turn 18. Her name is Asha. She's played by Ariana DeBose, who uh, won an Oscar for her role in West Side Story. And, you know, she lives within this kingdom. Um, there's this king who everybody admires, and um, they have this system whereby when people come of age, they kind of give up one of their wishes to the king. And the king holds them together in his castle in this kind of magic containment system <laughs> um, and then every so often he grants a wish uh, and so the you know all of the the inhabitants of this kingdom they uh, you know they wait and hope for their wish to come true they trust in the ruler and basically uh, Asha gets a up close interview together with the king and realizes that he's not quite what he's cracked up to be mm. uh, you know the people in the kingdom are trusting him a little bit too much and then as we get more and more information um, you know she discovers that she has a bit of kind of power herself uh, and it's connected with the whole uh, I mean it's kind of a Disney legend the wish upon a star 
Uh, and so Disney is kind of taking that from uh, the famous song. And yeah, and so that ultimately we get kind of a good versus evil type of confrontation. We have a lot of, you know, supporting characters. There's a talking goat. There's <laughs> <laughs> it's a classic Disney, essentially. Yeah, very, very much classic Disney. Okay. And what do you think of it? Why was this your recommendation this week? Well, I think that, you know, I mean, Disney has a lot of experience with this. Um, it's my recommendation. That doesn't mean it's 100%, uh, you know, satisfaction. Sure, <laughs> sure. Um, and certainly there are aspects of this film that do feel like they're trying really, really hard to kind of please the viewer. And of course, every movie wants to please its audience. But when you can feel the effort and kind of the sweat behind that and the, <laughs> the desperate effort to appeal to the audience, then, you know, that's one thing that kind of turns off the audience sometimes. And uh, it is a little bit manic in parts, like the, mm. uh, the musical numbers, you know, the other, um, the humor, some some of it does kind of just, you know, barely uh, stay under control uh, as we're watching the film. Uh, on the other hand, you know, the, you know, the music, I think the, the music will appeal to a lot of people. Um, you know, it is very aspirational and, you know, kids, I think, will appreciate it. And even if it's, they're not going to respond to it in the same way that they did to Frozen. Uh, you know, if you are a parent with small kids, there are only a few films like this that are released every year. And, you know, among the animated films of the year, I think that this is one that um, parents can kind of trust that their, their kids will enjoy. Right. So perhaps not disciplined, but uh, definitely uh, fun for the family to watch and uh, some good messages, wholesome messages there as well. Jason, what do you think of it? Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I agree with uh, Darcy. Uh, I, I, you know, for the families, absolutely. This is this is this is a film that uh, is good to go and watch it together. I watched it with my son this morning. Uh, it's it's very Disney, um, <laughs> like literally. I mean, it starts starts off once upon a time, and then it finishes off happily ever after. And um, you've got the musical numbers, and um, so you're saying that's a bad thing? No, I mean, it just the thing is, it just. I mean, it, Disney's been cel celebrating its centenary and um, it just, I feel it's like a minor kind of, it doesn't feel like a major piece of uh, filmmaking for Disney mm. uh, in the same way that Frozen was. You know, obviously that was a hugely significant film as was Elemental, as was, you know, Coco, um, Coco and many others. And I think those films culturally, they're very interesting and, and significant. This this very much focuses on the individual again, you know, aspirational, as, as Darcy mentioned, you know, following one's dreams, wishes, you know, that's, it, it's very quintessential Disney. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, and it works very well in that way. Mm -hmm. um, it's very polished. It's uh, It's got a good running time. It's, what, 90 minutes or so or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, and, you know, it's very engaging. It's it's fun. It's fun to watch with, with the, you know, as, as a family. Um, but, yeah, it doesn't really break new ground. It felt somewhat complacent, uh, very safe. Um, and um, yeah. yeah, it'll work better for children than for yeah, adults sure. It works. Well. My, my son liked <laughs> like, it. He, you know, he was like, "What was wrong with it?" And I was like, "Well," and I explained to him, and he kind of went over his head. But, uh, <laughs> this is but, why you shouldn't like this. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm sure audiences. I mean, I, I actually went to see it in a fairly full screen, mm. you know, and the kids seem to be enjoying it very, very much. And I see audiences here very much. Uh, engaging with it, you sure. know, spe especially the musical numbers. Um, but yeah, th th there's another movie I I I'd rather talk about. Okay, <laughs> well, okay, let's. I guess let's get on to that then. Uh, that was Wish, Darcy's recommendation of the week. Jason, so what is your recommended film of the week then? Well, this is actually uh, um, Darcy suggested this. We, we we were kind of texting each other. Um, and because there were no other major releases out this week, so mm. we were looking at other titles, you know, indie films. And uh, yeah, Darcy uh, recom you mentioned uh, Maestro, uh, which is this uh, new film, very much in the kind of the Oscar race, directed and co written by Bradley Cooper, uh, obviously an A list, well established, uh, you know, Hollywood actor. And uh, he stars in this movie as the American uh, composer Leonard. Bernstein. Mm. Uh, so it's a biopic and uh, it very much focuses primarily on 
uh, this composer's relationship. I mean, Bernstein, for those of you who listeners are not familiar with, uh, I'm less familiar with him as, as I'm not a, a musical person. I'll, I'll be pl- completely honest uh, <laughs> about that. He's one of the most talented conductors, uh, uh, you know, of his generation, of uh, and uh, significant for being the first Amer- first American-born conductor to lead uh, a major symphony orchestra. So. Um, but yeah, here it focuses on the relationship between him and his, his wife, uh, Felicia, played by Carrie Mulligan, who's mm. just unbelievable in this movie. Absolutely unbelievable. She's just terrific. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it, it, it begins with when the composer, I think he's in his 70s, he's, ha- he's, ha- he's, uh, um, he's having his, he, uh, he's being interviewed on TV uh, he, and uh, he's playing the piano and, he, and he's kind of reminiscing about his wife. And then it kind of goes back to his 20s uh initially to his 20s where it kind of it, it basically i mean it's at that point it's just black and white it begins in color and then as the film kind of progresses further into his life it goes it returns back to color mm. uh and so yeah we get to see him meeting his wife for the first time at a party and i, I love those kind of early scenes where they're kind of uh, developing their relationship and kind of fall in love and then uh as he becomes more successful uh, this adds strains uh, to his relationship with his wife and also he, we see him kind of engaging in various relationships with men as well uh, and uh, but she remains you know from beginning to end one of his, his closest friends so it focuses on him uh, his wife and also his family right um, what I liked about this film uh, is the way in which it doesn't I mean the conventional way to do, I suppose, would be to kind of focus on his kind of most famous music. And as I understand it, it actually doesn't do that at all. Um, we see him kind of develop this relationship with his wife. It doesn't really kind of, it, it could focus on his, you know, the wedding and then the kids and all the rest of it. It doesn't really do that at all. Mm. Uh, and I think, you know, very much, it's very much dependent on performances here and Bradley Cooper is fantastic but Carrie Mulligan oh my <laughs> goodness she is sensational and uh, uh, and later on in the film she uh, I mean basically there's this really devastating scene where she's basically diagnosed with with cancer and the doctor comes in and just within minutes it, she's she's basically been told about what's going to happen to her and it's just it's just completely devastating. Mm. And I think the scene really captured what I liked about the film because it, it doesn't. I mean, it, it it and that scene is quite brief, but it really lingers for a long time. And then right, we see okay. her basically, she, she, yeah. Subsequently, you know, uh, you know, she passes away. But yeah, it's right. it's, it's kind of done in a really. Um, I would say unconventional way. It feels a different. It feels a very. Or, it's done organically, is what I'm trying to say. And uh, yeah, uh, it's. I think it's one of the best biopic uh, biopics I've seen in, in a long time. But some 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 argue that it's because because this particular right. composer had you know many relationships with men and it kind of doesn't really delve into his sexuality all that much. I think that's one of his strengths. Some would argue it's it's the film's weaknesses. One of the film's weaknesses. Uh, but yeah, premiered at the Venice Film Festival, great right. for the Golden Lion, uh, went on a limited theatrical release. It's now available on Netflix. I recommend it very, very much. Right. So you recommend it. You think it's uh, quite a powerful piece very and powerful, powerful yeah. biopic. Darcy, what about you? What did you make of it? Yes, I. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I was very impressed with the film. Um, I mean, Bradley Cooper has a really interesting career developing here because, um, you know, he. Had had huge success with *The Star Is Born*, uh, and then he moved on to this film. Uh, you know, this film I noticed was produced by both Martin Scorsese yeah, that's a good point, yeah. and, and Steven Spielberg. Spielberg. Yeah. And so, wow! <laughs> I mean, quite a <laughs> quite a, a team behind you. <laughs> mm. And he's you know clearly a really creative and talented director. Uh, you know, I think that to a certain extent you can feel him stretching his wings or kind of displaying his creativity um and i wonder if it in part that's a response to the fact that a lot of people you know would see him as an actor and some people are kind of skeptical when actors turn to directing like you know you know maybe you'll be good at directing actors but are you really (laughs) are you really good at directing and and obviously there have been plenty of examples of amazing uh directors who started their careers as actors so i mean he shouldn't feel the need to prove himself but I mean, to me, the one thing that I felt 
in this film. Uh, scene by scene, there was there were really interesting things going on. Like the way that it progressed from scene to scene was not the typical pattern. Yep. And so everything felt kind of fresh in terms of the way that the story progressed and what it was showing us. Um, yep. I mean, to me, the one thing that made me kind of stand back a bit from the film was the sense that it was kind of showing, not showing off, but showing its creativity. Right in a very direct kind of way. Um, and Again, trying too hard, maybe, like Wish? Well, I don't know. I mean, it, I mean, it's unfair to make this comparison, but if we compare it to someone like Spielberg, like, I mean, Spielberg has never done that because he always is so focused on the story and, um, it's true. and just kind of lets the story tell itself. And, you know, this one, it feels very much like it's being told. Right, okay. Uh, and, uh, I mean, clearly he's an extremely talented director. I uh, I think he has a bright career ahead of him and I uh, I applaud him on this effort. Um, yeah. Last thing is, it's interesting that, you know, Tar came out last year, another big film about a, a fictional composer. Right. Um, I loved Tar. Tar is great. <laughs> I mean, okay. Okay. Hey, Blanchett, again, you right. know, what a performance. Well, unfortunately, we don't have time to go into that <laughs> because we, have, we are out of time. Uh, that's we're going to leave it for our revamped movie <laughs> spotlight, gentlemen. That was fun. As always, thank you, Jason Darcy. We'll see you next time. Yep. Take care. Bye bye.